Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome to the results from typing assignment number 12, which was on the subject of thankfulness. Stay tuned. Although this was a rather timely subject matter for a typing assignment, given the coincidence with the American Thanksgiving holiday, uh, I think it was a rather difficult assignment for a lot of us, uh, writing about thankfulness one way or the other, either personal from a personal perspective or uh, maybe from the perspective of a character in a story. I think it is kind of difficult for us to share or to get into this. Uh, so it was a challenge. But for typing assignment 12, we had 12 participants, not including myself. And so uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy the results. I certainly did. So without any further ado, let's get into the slideshow.
We'll start off with Diane Mayer's piece written on the 1954 Olympia SG-1, and her th subject on thankfulness is simple yet profound, which is that uh, in the subject of, of cats specifically, but animals in general, you know, a lot of us think of thankfulness as a very high-level human type of emotion, being able to cognitively, cognitively uh, appreciate things and give thanks for things. But I think animals, and in her case, her cats especially, show this trait in their willingness to stay with us and to uh, appreciate what we do for them as, as pets. And I think it's a real simple but profound thing that it isn't just a human trait of thankfulness, but animals show it as well. Thank you, Diane. It was really a good piece. Well, secondly is Andrew Nichols' piece called Footprints, and it's a really nice piece. He's um, writing about this place called the National Trust in Greenway, County Devon in England. And it is a place where Agatha Christie, the famous author, uh, used to stay numerous times, wrote from there, and also located many of her stories or some of her stories there. And what Andrew is really thankful for is that uh, he's thankful that he was able to arrange to stay at the National Trust on his birthday, and he's thankful that there are writers like Agatha Christie who make life worth living because of the wonderful stories they tell, and also thankful that he's able to uh, be at uh, the National Trust with his typewriter, uh, very much like Agatha Christie, and inspired by the typewriter and by the location. And I can certainly appreciate all of that, Andrew. And I can sort of, sort of feel like I'm there with you. I sure wish I was, and thank you very much. John Monroe's piece called Giving Thanks really meant a lot to me. Uh, John is a, a Canadian-born uh, native of Toronto, spent a lot of time traveling the world, but has been living uh, the last uh, number of years in Japan and is very much... Uh, a Japanese culturally, as he describes it. Um, and he has an interesting view on, on Thanksgiving. First of all, his family celebrated Canadian Thanksgiving when he was young, and he really liked the customs to that, uh, uh, to that celebration. Um, but as he says, nowadays, a, a lot of Canadians aren't as attuned to Thanksgiving because it's viewed as an American holiday and maybe they don't like American football either or Turkey. I can appreciate that. But uh, what he has found is in Japan, uh, there is a culture of thankfulness and it is expressed in often in this phrase, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, erigatu gozaimasu. And it, which is, literally means difficult to have, which is when someone has uh, done you a favor and you appreciate it with thank, thankfulness, you're saying, uh, I owe you debt. Uh, I owe you a debt that is difficult to hold. And so how can I ever repay you is the implication there. And I really thought that was very interesting. And jo John goes on in his piece to describe how uh, in Japanese culture, thanks is given to everything, the things that us Westerners would not appreciate or would, would totally, we'd totally miss. And so I really appreciate that. And he finishes his piece talking about the question of his own personal identity, having been born and raised as a Canadian and having been kind of an international citizen and now enculturated in, in, in the Japanese traditions, uh, he really has a lot of thankfulness for that. And I really appreciate that, John. Thank you. David Randall's piece was very cool. Uh, he wrote this on a Singer Scholastic T4. And this is a wonderful piece. Uh, it, it's a story of how he met, he met his wife. Um, he was living in England and he had uh, ordered a book uh, and the book was a recommendation by his former girlfriend's father. He orders the book from America, but gives the wrong, uh, a typographical error on his return address. And he has to end up calling the book place and straightening out the uh, address problem. And in the course of doing so, he meets uh, the lady at the book place in America over the phone and they strike up a conversation and pretty much uh, soon strike up a relationship and before you know it she comes over to England and they 
Uh, they're married, and they end up going back to America, living in Seattle, where they're at now. What a wonderful story, all because of a typographical error on a book order. I think that is a great story and a great uh, sense of thankfulness in that. And thank you very much, David. I enjoyed it. Oh, and I also enjoyed your red-black ink uh, imprint on your typewriter. That was very cool. David Cornelli's piece, Building Thankfulness, was written on a 1939 Continental with a blue ribbon. I love the blue ribbon. This guy right here has a blue ribbon. Uh, so, Building Thankfulness, and this is literally about building. Uh, he's uh, referring to uh, his experience in um, overseeing the finishing of a large building project and how the building requires so much talent and skill on so many different levels from the construction people at and it goes from a muddy hole in the ground to a finished, wonderful structure with all the infrastructure needed for a modern building and the wiring and the network and the plumbing and the everything. Uh, but just the overall thankfulness for what it takes to build a complex project like that. And it really is it's something we take for granted in this day and age, I think. How complex are the systems that we use in our culture? And uh, there is a lot of thankfulness uh, needed there. But he especially uses the phrase, the human factor. And I really like that term. The human factor is what we have to be thankful for, that there are so many talented people that we can organize together to finish a project like that. Thank you very much, David. I really enjoyed this one. Andy Kev, Kevin Anderson's piece, was written on a Smith Corona Silent, and it's titled What Really Matters, and it really is about that. He talks about, we live in a rich country here in America, and we often take things for granted, and we, generally speaking, the majority of us have plenty of material possessions, but there are so many people also who are down and out and do need our help, and we're reminded of this every Thanksgiving season by all the pleas for help from the the various uh, organizations that do care for the down and out and the less fortunate. But uh, this kind of struck home in a personal way for him when recently he's been having some medical health issues and the cause of which is still kind of open and he's ho and he's still un undergoing kind of a healing process we hope. Uh, so he, it's a real sobering thing when you realize that the most important thing that matters is family, loved ones, and especially good health. And we do send our best thoughts to you, uh, uh, Kevin, uh, that you would recover fully. And I really love what he says in his piece toward the end. Uh, in terms of being thankful, we live in a beautiful world. And he's thankful for that. And I really appreciate that. And we do hope you get well soon. Okay, this next piece is by local Albuquerque and Kevin Kittle. He wrote it on a 1978 IBM Correcting Selectric 2, and his piece is about thank yous. And it's really kind of an admonition to the typewriter community here that, you know, we don't really actually need typewriters uh, in terms of e uh, our business and correspondence that we normally use maybe computers and word processors for or even texting but the one thing the one purpose or use of typewriters that is the most essential for us really is thank you notes I really like this uh, this perspective that Kevin has this is the one thing that typewriters really can do well is typing a personal thank you note to somebody because when they receive a card in the mail like a Hallmark card and they'll read it and, oh, okay and they'll throw it away uh, usually but even a handwritten note may not mean as much but a typewritten note that means a lot to many people and I can see this is a very good idea for the typewriter typewriter community that we need to be spreading the evangelism of typewriters through thank you notes and that was a really good thing and thank you very much Kevin for the reminder. Diane Cox's piece uh, is really interesting and uh, she first of all references Bill Bryson the author who's uh, in his book A Short History of Nearly Everything and in that book uh, he is essentially saying that we need to be thankful or grateful for our genetic heritage uh, that goes back billions of years actually uh, outlasts or predates uh, most uh, geology in fact that somehow despite all the tremendous odds against against us we as individuals are the inheritors of a long genetic lineage that was able to somehow survive and reproduce and 
result with us here today. Definitely, I can appreciate that. But on a personal level, Diane is really thankful for uh, the thing that is paper, paper that goes back thousands of years into human ancestry. Uh, she's had a personal history uh, working with paper, uh, paper mills, being a creative person since childhood working with paper. She appreciates paper in all of its uses and especially being able to use paper in our typewriters. I can really appreciate that. I, I think paper is a great invention, and yeah, it goes back a long time. And thank you for that reminder, Diane, uh, that paper is so valuable of a thing to us creatives. Ira Stone's piece, uh, written on a Sears Chevron, was really funny, humorous, and, and very meaningful. He calls it Thanks for Nothing, and it's a two-part uh, piece. Uh, the first part, he's really writing from the perspective of Tom the turkey, who sees every year his fellow turkeys being slaughtered by the two-legged ones uh, for some kind of annual ritual. And he uh, essentially, despite all that, all he can say is thanks for nothing. But uh, Ira, on the other hand, despite the lament of Tom and, and his ilk, Ira sees a lot of good in Thanksgiving, and despite the sacrifice that the turkeys have to make, uh, sees a great uh, fortune in his life, in his family's life, and uh, he is very appreciative of all that he has. And so that's really why we give thanks uh, every year, is because we are appreciative of what we have. And so thank you, Ira, for reminding us, us of that and of the sacrifice that those Tom turkeys have to make. Craig Harrison wrote his piece on the 1946 Underwood Master, and his was a very funny piece. Uh, he's uh, talking about he enjoys solitude, uh, unlike a lot of people, and uh, one of the things that relates to his solitude is the fact that he likes to do his laundry separate from his wife, and uh, it comes down to the whole thing about clothes hangers and the fact that they share a, a closet space together, but somehow the hangers end up drifting over onto her side of the closet and he's always having to search for cl clothes hangers and uh, he ends up as he calls himself he ends up being a closet hanger hider having to hide his few clothes hangers I think that was really very humorous uh, Craig being a married person I can definitely appreciate the challenges involved as we share our lives together we are all individuals we have something certainly in common which is why we're together but we also are individuals and uh, sometimes our little uh, Venn diagram of our lives overlapping can cause tensions like that so I hope you find peace in your uh, closet hanger dilemma me I have a small house and our closets are small so my clothes are in the office closet right here behind the curtain that's how we dealt with that problem Okay, well, thank you very much, Craig, and thank you for participating in the typing assignments. This next piece is rather special. This is uh, Michael Kitchen's piece that was actually submitted for typing assignment number 11, uh, the Halloween-themed typing assignment, and somehow my um, email detected his uh, message to me as spam and put it in the spam folder, and I never, uh, I never put it in the video. So I'm including... Uh, Michael's piece called The Perfect Costume should have been in last uh, in the last video typing assignment 11. This is a, a month later or so, but I apologize, Michael, but hopefully everybody gets to read it and enjoy it. And it was a really fun piece, a little bit of a hard-boiled detective novel, murder mystery kind of setting with a ghost uh, that turns out to be a real ghost. That was very fun, Michael. I enjoyed it. Okay, Alex Lopatka's piece was uh, written on an Olympia SM-8, and uh, it's really about him um, considering, first of all, all of the things that he has to do in life that might be bothersome or troublesome or irksome. All the responsibilities, all the little things around the house that need to be fixed that might be broken, all the little chores and jobs he has to do to keep things going. But the second part of it is he then stops to consider everything he has. He has a, has a, a job that's interesting. He has a, a house that's comfortable, heated, cooled, a place to cook, windows to let in light, a yard to have a garden with. 
And so he finishes by saying, so many others don't, don't even have the basics, yet I have those and much, much more. And that is indeed so much of the essential spirit of Thanksgiving that we can see, and despite all the problems that we're so conscious of in our lives, we can appreciate everything that we have. And then uh, uh, my piece called Time, I wrote on this uh, Smith Corona Electric, and it was really about, uh, I was trying to think about what am I most thankful for? There are so many things in my life to be thankful for. I appreciate all of you out there. I appreciate my family, my home, my job, all the blessings of life, but really it's about time. I appreciate every moment I don't know, none of us do know, how many more moments we might have. And so I'm thankful for every moment I have, and then I can hopefully spend those moments as wisely as possible. Well, that was a fun assignment. I really appreciate hearing uh, the uh, heartfelt sentiment and you, you guys wrote about thankfulness and in such a wide variety of uh, perspectives. And I hope you enjoyed the assignment as well. I hope it uh, stretched your writer legs a little bit. And I'm hoping to have typing assignment 13 out maybe hopefully this week, if not next, then next week. But until then, you guys have yourselves a great day and stay creative.